The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. ESPN Northwest Florida. And we are back. This is the Afternoon Underdogs right here on ESPN Northwest Florida. A fun Friday continues on. Me and Caveman Rick just had a little bit of a heated debate. He thinks that awesome. Nick Saban uh, left because of, or, or ran. He ran. ran. Not just left, but ran from the NIO and, the, and the transfer portal. Um, I, I just I just disagree, man. I feel like if he felt like he had enough energy in the tank, he would have uh, stood up to that. And, and j- like he was doing well with it as it was. Man, it takes a lot and, more energy to lose than it is to win. I think uh, he ran out of fingers. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. That's a good way to put it right there. It was a fun uh, conversation, though, but we're going to continue it on, uh, recapping Money in the Bank and all kind of great things. We've got Jimmy Farrow. We've got Coach Brian Haddad in the building with us. Monty is on the line. So, Coach Brian, take it over, man. Let's talk some wrestling, baby. Oh, I love this. You know I love this. Monty and the Farrow joining us again. Guys, I say it every time, but if you're not following Monty and the Farrow, on YouTube, Facebook, watch them on Cable Vision. Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Uh, over on that Eastern time zone. You know, yeah. you guys have to do everything an hour early, you know, yeah. but whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, I do want to get into last night, though. You guys had a great guest last night. Well, let me, let me, let me welcome Monty into the show. Monty, how you doing today? Wonderful, man. We're looking forward to another episode of the Afternoon on the Dogs. With hey, Mark, you Farrow, and the nice. coach. There you nice. go. Well, let's talk about last night. You know, you guys, obviously, you go back and check the back catalog. You guys have had wonderful, wonderful guests and, you know, great wrestling discussion. But last night, you had a guy who maybe to some of the younger viewers may not know as well, but they really should. Guy's been around in wrestling for, you know, 40 plus years. I remember him as a part of the Killer Bees with Jumpin' Jim Brunzel, but mm-hmm. Brian Blair on the show. Maybe you talk a little bit about, you know, having Blair on last night and, and how it went. Brian Blair is one of those guys in the business that are true blue, real gentlemen, <laughs> not just a great wrestling career, but more importantly, a great person. Uh, currently the president of the uh, Cauliflower Alley Club. Mm, yep. He does a lot of work behind the scenes for the <clears throat> wrestlers who are struggling. And unfortunately, guys, there's plenty of them. Yeah. Unfortunately, yep. uh, he's done a lot of amazing work for people in need. Uh, you know, the families of wrestlers who may be passed on. Cool. You know, he's just a great, great guy. Um, he's... he's um, self-proclaimed just like a lot of people are he's he's a uh, you know born again christian but he's the real deal yeah he's not one of those that just get on tv flash a smile and then start dancing like an idiot yeah um he's, he's, <laughs> baby billy's baba yeah. Baba. <laughs> <laughs> brother billy baba Boopa. yeah praise be to he yeah none, none of that none of that going on just a great guy and that was one of my favorite interviews and it amazes me after doing this for years with my partner mike here it amazes me that just when you you know you get burnt out sometimes with it along comes a guest like brian blair and just makes it all worthwhile. Mike, what did you think last night? Couldn't agree more, Jimmy. Uh, quite the gentleman. Uh, great human being, most importantly. Uh, I could tell in your voice how much he, he meant to you. So, yeah. uh, And I feel exactly the same way. Incredible. Yep. Incredible human being. Well, guys, last time we met, we were talking going into Money in the Bank, and you know, WWE's been on this incredible run, and, and I think they still are, but, but you know, perhaps maybe... I think a miss is the wrong term for the show, but let's just say not everything was firing on all cylinders. Had, you know, a few little trip ups, botches, things like that. It wasn't maybe uh, quite as much of a knock it out of the park show as we'd seen on the previous PLEs, but um, kind of wanted y'all's overall thoughts maybe on Money in the Bank, and then we'll go maybe specifically through the matches. Uh, most of the time, I'm very, very supportive of WWE products, especially their their premium live events. Scott, I finally saw said that. <laughs> to me it's, I like PPV so much. Yeah, though. I know. I know. But honestly, you know, and you're being very nice about it, I thought it sucked. Yeah. I thought it was kind of lame. I was very disappointed. I gave it a C. I never do that. Usually I'm anywhere from a B to an A, A plus, depending on it. But there was just 
too many things about it I didn't care for. Some of the booking decisions I thought were an absolute joke. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some real botches. Yeah. One of major. Oh, it was a major. I, one. You know, I yeah. don't know if you want to take us through matches, whatever you want to do here, but there was definitely, it wasn't what I'm used to. You know, and I actually at one point texted to Mike, I want Vince. <laughs> oh, no. You know, so the first uh, black was, eye for Triple it H. Was then. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'd call it a black yeah. eye. It's more like he's tripped and skinned his knee. Okay, yeah. well, I'm being a little rough, you know, well, about it, but I was not happy with it. I think that's right. I think when I called you and we talked about it, or so I said, I think this is Triple H's first miss. Right. So, Mike, what did you think overall? Well, I guess I'm the uh, idiot in the room. I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I thought, every, you know, okay, yeah, there were botches, but overall, I I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very good PPE. So, hey, wait a minute, Mike. Mike. You, gave PLA, PLA. you gave it a B. You gave it a B. I gave it. I gave it a B, Jimmy. And I, you know, I'm letting Coach lead the way here. But you know, we spoke about the women's match. I loved it. You hated it. Right. Um, the women's match was big time for me. Um, Dame, Damian Priest. Well, let's just get into it. I don't yeah, want to yeah. go run amok. All yeah, right? That was the women's match, Damian Priest? Well, well, that that's kind, <laughs> of, that's kind that. of what I want to start with. So match of the night uh, for, for each of us. I, I'll kind of lead off with, sure. I actually, when I initially watched it, I was kind of with Mike. I thought the women's Money in the Bank match, to me, it had, to me, the best high spots. That's true. Uh, and and so, so immediately after, that would have been my pick. Now, I went mm -hmm. back and watched it again. Mm -hmm. And to be perfectly honest, the match that grew on me the second time yep. that didn't the first was actually the men's Money in the Bank match itself. Mm -hmm. Extremely tight, clean. And maybe because there were little botches in every other match, but mm -hmm. tight, clean. Don't know that I love the decision because of what would happen later, mm -hmm. but I thought that match really did. So I'm probably going to lean that way. So, uh, Jimmy, what, what, what was probably your favorite match of the night? Uh, it's really a reflection on my lack of enthusiasm for the pay-per-view, I actually thought that the men's match at the end was the most serviceable. When I'm using the tag match, yeah. When yeah. I'm using serviceable, you better watch out. That's my <laughs> polite way of saying, well, this was the best of a bunch of nonsense for the most part. I just wasn't that big on this pay-per-view. Yes, there were some really good high spots in the women's match. There were, mm -hmm. but it was nothing. It wasn't a spectacular match. It's not something I'm going to remember years from sure. now. It's not something I'm going to talk about years from now. Yeah. So, you know, I look I look for things like that. A great match should be something that you great great match. The term great match gets thrown around all over the place nowadays. Like Everything's a classic. Like dynasty. Yeah. Every right. Everything's yeah. a classic. Dynasty. Right. Yeah. Well when are we gonna see a dynasty in baseball again? We're you never know? gonna yeah. see dynasty. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. not. The words you need get, to win three or more to be a dynasty. Yeah, the words get thrown around all the time. Two really you know? good ones. Back to back and uh, three out of four years, you know, give, yeah. you give me right. that. Right. What do you think, Mike? You, you still sticking with the women's match for you? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the women's, uh, you know, and I chose Chelsea Green to win it, but she had a coming out party. She, she was did. fantastic in that match. She and, uh, you know, tippy time. Yes. Uh, again, you know, Jimmy says, you know, you know, what's a standout match that you remember? Well, let's be honest. I don't think there's one match under Triple H's regime that we remember anything. And this is going on for years now. He's got a point. I mean, this is the new wrestling, right? It's, yeah. uh, you know, point. Uh, the last match I really remember is Andre and Hogan. To be honest. <laughs> hey, there you go. So, wow. <laughs> so, so, you know, there you go. There's been a few in between, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let me ask you guys this, because we had talked a little bit on the lead-in that I felt like Money in the Bank was getting kind of, it, it was too soon after King of the Ring, which also had championship match implications. Mm -hmm. Well, on the men's match, they obviously decide to do an immediate cash in. Now, botch aside, we'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> did we waste the money in the bank briefcase, yes. or do we care? No, we wasted it. I think we wasted it. What is the point? One of the best things about Money in the Bank is the suspense after the winner gets that briefcase. Right. Because you have a full calendar year, a full calendar year to cash this briefcase in. Mm -hmm. Okay? For the sake of, of a quick instant gratification thing. They to have tell a story they've already told. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the story doesn't need the briefcase. That's right. That's, that's, right. The, that's the most important part. But here McIntyre gets that briefcase cashes it in on the same night, whoops, yeah. loses. 
because mm-hmm. he's in the middle of this great feud with Punk. Yeah. Punk doesn't need the briefcase. McIntyre doesn't need the briefcase. The storyline doesn't need the briefcase. Right. So you just took something that could have been milked like a big fat cow with perfection mm. for the next calendar year, and you threw it away on, in, on the same night. Cut the udders right off of the cow. Yeah, you basically, you know, holy <laughs> milk. Oh, you know, this is strawberry milk. What kind of cow is this? You know what I mean? No, bad. Yeah. Man, I thought that was terrible. What about you, Mike? Not necessary. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with what I said last time I was on the show. Uh, I don't understand how long can you continue to do this to McIntyre. Yeah. Uh, you know who? You know at what point does Punk become the bad guy here? I, I mean, in in common sense and society, you're looking at this guy McIntyre who's been robbed and cheated for the last two years, whether it be the Bloodline, CM Punk. When is this guy going to get his? Yeah. You know, ounce of flesh. Right. So I was really shocked they pulled the P- CM Punk card. I didn't mind him cashing in, but, you know, at what point does McIntyre win this? Yeah. And to go to Jimmy's point, maybe never. Never. So I don't know. Matter of fact, I, I sliced his tires. He just pulled that into the parking lot. He was supposed <laughs> to be on the show with us. McIntyre can't even get through the floor. I, I had this thought when they just announced Bad Blood is returning. It's going to be, yeah. what is it, 27 years or whatever to the day of the original Bad Blood with Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, and Kane. Okay. And it, I would imagine, obviously, you have to have a Hell in a Cell there, and it just looks tailor-made for Drew and Punk. Right. And and I'm sure they, they will, because Punk is very big about leading to a moment. He, mm-hmm. he would never let them start with a Hell in a Cell, like right, right out. So right. I, I just have this feeling it's going to end there for those guys. Let me get to another one that I'm sure is going to make Jimmy's head Coach, explode Coach, here. Coach, can I just yeah. say one thing? Yeah, one absolutely. Thing. Here's where the WWE and Triple H are making their mistake. We're all assuming that CM Punk can actually compete with Drew McIntyre. I'm talking about real wrestling. CM Punk has proven to be looking old, Mm -hmm. looking tired. It's fragile. And I think, yeah, I think in the end, this is a big mistake. He can't handle McIntyre. And I'm talking about, yes, fake, orchestrated wrestling. Athletic-wise, yeah. McIntyre is 10 times bigger. Sorry to cut you off. No, I think that's a great point. You and, hate him. and <laughs> <laughs> He hates CM Punk. Well, He'll look, find anything he can to hate on CM Punk. My, Those my, stupid tattoos. My, Pepsi, I like Coke. Mike, you're going to appreciate this because you know how hard Jimmy's head's about to explode oh, here. No. Uh, uh, let me ask the next question. Uh, uh, should Braun Breaker have won? Jerk. <laughs> jerk. Oof. Come on, Mike. Oof. Come on, Mike. Oof. What do you guys Jimmy, think? I'm not answering this, bro. You guys yes, answer. you are. Come on. Broad, we need, we need content breaker, for next Thursday. Broad Breaker should have not only won the match, Zane should have left on a stretcher. <laughs> What is this garbage? Sami Zayn pinning Braun Breaker. That was just garbage. And nobody in this room thought that was going to happen. No. And sometimes that annoys me. It's like we've got to have one match that just shocks everybody. Well, I don't think that that was the one to do it with. That's a terrible, terrible decision. I can't stand it. We've now had Sami Zayn, who coach looks like Hulk Hogan standing next to Sami Zayn. Uh, we have, we have Sami Zayn be- beating Gunther. After the longest intercontinental title reign in the history of this business, 666 days, we haven't beaten the the German machine, Gunther. And then we now have, with a straight face, you're going to tell me that he can beat Steiner's kid. Yeah. You know, I think Caveman would put Zane through a table in a, in a split second. I love it. What are we doing? I agree that Oh, no, man. I'm not that big of a dude. But. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need to be. This is Sammy we're talking about. We don't, you don't need to be. But, you just got to have some attitude. All right, all right. So, so, you got so, some attitude. Oh, I got that. He's got plenty of that. But, but, but Jimmy, he's, he's, he's our baby picker. Yeah, yeah, you'll, no you'll, doubt. You'll think about that, care. kid. So, so what we talked about is I agree with you that I think I think they should have gone on and put Braun over. However, I actually think there is a story yeah, there is. for what they're doing. Yeah, so I don't mind it probably as much as you do. I do think there was a better way to do it. But I, I like the story they're telling about he's he's young. Like, he's a phenomenon, mm-hmm. but he's young. But every time they do something to him, he learns instantly. Right. Like, they can't hit him the second right. time with it. Penny him clean didn't make right. sense to me. But right. I think they can tell a story here with the wily veteran, you know, getting one up on the, 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 new, the, the new big thing. The only thing that I will find acceptable with, with uh, Breaker struggling, okay, 
is as if one, you know, one one vignette they have, he's in the locker room, and you can see that you finally can maybe see a little personality coming out of him that he's frustrated. Yeah. You know, like he's putting his boots on and he's like staring at his locker and he's really disillusioned. How am I not beating these guys? Yeah. Okay. And then when he turns around, Paul Heyman's standing there. Oh, he says, no, kid, no, okay. I think no, you and I should have a discussion. Oh. Okay. I can live with that. But I, and I hear Mike moaning in the background. Well, Mike, Mike wants Paul to come back with, I with somebody else, I, well, as, that's as obvious. do I. But I'm just saying, though, Look. if you're going to have this kid lose and you want there to be a storyline where he figures everything out and you want guidance from someone, yeah. I think Heyman is the perfect candidate to manage a machine, a killer, like Braun Breaker. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And, Jimmy, you always pull that Heyman card. I do. Over, well, it got to bring in Heyman. Yeah. Let's, call it like, let's call it like it is. Everybody was like, well, Braun Breaker's winning the IC title. Everybody. So there's yeah. Shawn Michaels, there's Triple H going, <laughs> let's let him pin Breaker and we'll really tell these smart marks what it's all about. Have I a can, good day. That's they, what, what it was all about. They That's sounded it. just like that, too. Did I, I bet they did. <laughs> I got a great idea, Sean. What's that, <laughs> that Paul? Sounds like Pinky had the brain for that, some yeah, reason. I think that, <laughs> let's have him lose and just screw up everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see that. I can see that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hey, we're going to go ahead and ride to a break and continue this fun segment on. We've got some uh, personalized questions for you guys as well. A uh, little tag team match between Jimmy and Monty. Uh, we'll be right back, though. This is the Afternoon Underdogs right here on ESPN Northwest Florida. For seven years, ESPN Northwest Florida has been your destination on the panhandle for the Atlanta Braves. He just blew the door off that thing. But our listeners are the real MVP. Another dominating performance. So this year we're giving away more tickets to Truist Park than ever before. Keep listening to win family four packs to experience the Atlanta Braves. From ESPN Northwest Florida, PCB Hobby, Pepsi, Fairfield, Hampton Inn on Thomas and Home 2 Suites. Good evening, this is Joanna with your weather forecast from ESPN Northwest Florida on this Friday. Clear tonight with a wind at 7 miles per hour out of the west and a low of 82. Tomorrow morning look for a light breeze and sunshine with a temperature near 90. The afternoon and evening, a high around 90 and a possibility of thunderstorms and mostly sunshine. Sunday hot with a high of 91 and sunshine. This weather forecast is brought to you by Ellis Agency Insurance. Thank you for listening to ESPN Northwest Florida. Rely on it. Did you know that fees associated with real estate closings are virtually the same from one title company to the next? So what sets South Oak Title apart? Effective communication, customer service, expertise, and technology. If you're buying or selling real estate, refinancing, a residential or commercial property, tell your realtor you want to close with South Oak Title. South Oak Title, with locations across the southeast, including Panama City, Panama City Beach, Inlet Beach, Destin, and Fort Walton Beach. Visit them online at SouthOakTitle.com. With over 65 years of combined experience, Instant Replay Sports Cards is happy to help you take your collection to the next level. level, level. They carry all the new hobby boxes, signed memorabilia, and supplies. New and vintage cards in Pokemon. They sell and trade cards and are always looking to buy. They're an authorized source for Tops, Panini, Upper Deck, and Leaf cards. Instant Replay Sports Cards is open seven days a week at 752 West 23rd Street, down from Academy Sports. It can always be reached at instantreplaysportscards.com. Karen bought 83 liters of Dr. Thunder, a suitcase full of Cheez-Its, and a drum of Crisco. Now she's crying about using the self-check at Walmart. Maybe Trump's we should talking. speak to a manager or something. Just saying. ESPN Northwest Florida. <laughs> And we are back. This is our final segment of the week. If you have any topics or questions or thoughts for uh, Monty, Farrow, Coach Brian Haddad, text them in to 85 or call 850. Uh, no, just text them 850-215-6290. Uh, I'm going to throw it back to Coach Brian Haddad because time flies when yes, you're having sir. fun, and we have a lot of fun with these segments. Well, I mean, we could go on and on about that premium live event forever, but I wanted to get to what happened the next night. So, okay, maybe for the first time in a while, sentiment is a little mixed coming out of a PLE. We've mm-hmm. got a Raw, and all they do... Look, it's often been described, wrestling's been described as a soap opera for men. Mm-hmm. And the way that Raw ended it, it just epitomized that so well. We've got 
Dominic Mysterio, who's the most hated person on earth, mm. with Liv Morgan, who is playing the succubus, if you will, sure. just trying to lure him in. Oh, yeah. That's a great and, word. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and look, they're, they're finally embracing it. Looks like maybe Dom's going to slip up, get a little smoochy <laughs> smooch. And, Le- and Rhea's music hit. I have to admit, Mike, I popped up off the couch like a 10-year-old. I, I thought it was hysterical. They told the story perfect, and I'm like, run, Dom, run. <laughs> what do we think about this? They brought it back a night later, two nights later, but uh, what do we, I mean, Rhea Ripley is a megastar. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's great. And yes, that was that was awesome. You know, it's always nice that when you do have that occasional sluggish premium live event that that, that Raw makes up for it. And I think that they did. Yeah. I thought that that was great. Mike, did you jump out of your chair <laughs> when you saw the great Rhea Ripley, the, the woman of all your affections I've, in I've, life? I've, I've, I've got to make a statement. This possibly might be the greatest pro wrestling storyline I've seen in the last 30 years. It's so good. <laughs> But, 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 but me and Jimmy were speaking about this on Thursday, Coach. Does social media, you know, social media helps wrestlers, but does social media now, with these guys showing they're getting married, yeah. they're married, yeah. is it ruining the storyline? I think to people who really, really follow it, maybe. But, it, like, I'm aware Dom is married. I'm aware Rhea just got right. married. Right. I don't even know if Liv's married or not. She that. might be. Right. I know she's got a significant other. Right. I, it didn't matter to me. It, I got so sucked into the way they told. First of all, Liv Morgan is underrated in how she has played this role. She's, she's done it crazy. well. I've, I've become a fan and of her. I wasn't I, before all of I, this. You're right in that would it be so much better if we didn't know all of this? Yeah. Yeah. It would be. That genie's not going back in the bottle, but they told the story so well, I popped for it. So Yeah, I agree with Mike, though. I would much yeah. rather have oh, it'd them be so much keep better. their stuff to themselves. You know, we were discussing it last night on the show, and I said to, my, I said to Mike on the show, you know, if you have public f- heels and faces, good guys and bad guys, and they want to hang out together or they want to do yeah. it, have a private barbecue. You all have mansions. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not yeah. like these wrestlers that work for WWE and making no money. Have a private barbecue. There's a little bucket when you get in the house. You take your cell phone, you put it in there, and the good guys and the bad guys can all throw up together after their 47th beer. Yeah. You know, we don't need to know yeah. what every last thing. But I, I also pointed out, in, in the, I've seen it in the past year or two, really used a lot. When you're having a feud with somebody, you go on and you tweet something about them. Yeah. yeah. Now, how am I supposed to buy into this? <laughs> Did you hear what Hulk Hogan said about you on, on X? Yeah, but well, Hulk's saying something I, it's, <laughs> it's just to me it's just lame you know but you look past it you yeah. know so it doesn't affect it, me that much i've grown numb to it yeah, you know? yeah. It's, new, it's new age wrestling it, the, the wrestlers are different now the vince mcmahon attitude doesn't work anymore but i would tell you if vince was running this angle these you wouldn't know that Rhea was married. You Agreed. wouldn't know Dom was married. Right. You would have said, squash it. Right. Keep it on, you know, show right. it when you're 40. You right. <laughs> Brian, Brian Epstein instructed, uh, Brian Epstein was the manager of the Beatles. Yeah. He instructed Lennon, do not, do not let anybody know that you're married to Cynthia. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. will not let the world know that one of the Beatles is married. It would have worked it, really it well if been... they'd have done it with the second wife, too. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> you know? Do not acknowledge Yoko Ono. Okay, no problem. Everybody would have been on board with that one. But it's the truth, though. I mean, you know, it was bad business. It yes. was bad That's for true. business. The That's Beatles true. were the poster boys and the wet dream, and I kept that clean, <laughs> of, of, of every American girl back in 1964 when they landed here. Here. So the last thing you want to do is, is have you seen John's wife? Then we have to like, oh, what do you mean? Yep. You know, so That's yeah, right. it would be a lot more effective because yeah. Mike's recollection of the the end of Raw was hilarious to me. He's like, you know, she's he's on top of living. And the first thing I thought was, is oh come on, Rhea just got married. She because she don't care. Yeah, and it's a great point. Yeah, you know, some things we don't need to know. Right. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I was just thinking about when you were talking about uh, the, the the Beatles there. I feel like if if that was in today's world and someone's got a wife, it almost gives uh, the other girls more incentive to go after. <laughs> <Right? laughs> in today's world, the wife goes on herself on the internet. I'm John Lennon's wife, and if you come near him, you know what I mean. It's yeah. just it's all That's too funny. So it's for the element of surprise. Maybe Taylor Swift should have stayed single. 
<laughs> you know? Don't talk about the Swifties, man. Mike is uh -oh. yeah, Mike yeah, very you worried when you bring up here. Taylor Swift. We'll get canceled. So <laughs> <laughs> let's be careful here. But Taylor Swift sucks. We will so. swiftly move oh on. <laughs> there we go. That's why he's the host, folks. There you go. Very well. Oh, uh, we, we got a question in from Kyle Albritton. Uh, we've got a tag yeah. team match. Okay. It's Jimmy. Or it's... Pharaoh versus Monty. What? Uh -oh. You got to pick your tag team partner. Me versus my partner? Yeah, you're exactly. It's uh, it's. Uh, Do it's, we get to train for this? Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, sure. You get as much <laughs> time. Right, as right, right, we, we're, we're talking all, all time yeah, here. Yeah, all yeah, time. You pick right. your tag partner, and Monty gets Mike, to pick his. Mike, you go his. first. Who, who's your partner against me in this um, this legendary feud we're having? <laughs> I'm going to go with the great Bob Backlund because I can only last in the ring about 10 seconds. So Bob can carry most of the load. <laughs> and, and you know Bob can go for hours. So uh, okay. yeah, I'll go with Bob Backlund on this. Uh, I like right. it. Monty okay. with the hot tag. Yeah, okay. I appreciate right. the, uh, the realism right. here. All right. Well, I'm going to give you some real realism. Farrell likes to win. <laughs> okay, my tag team partner is Andre the Giant. That's, oh, I figured oh. one of you would go Andre. Yeah, I'm going Andre because I don't care how untired Backlund gets. I'm going to tag to Andre, and he's going to go in there and eat him. And that's going to be the end of that. And, but this is what you forgot, Jimmy. Uh oh, here we go. Andre only likes certain people, and I don't think Andre would have liked you. You're right. You're right. Baby oil. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. He probably wouldn't like me, but but you know what though. If he's being paid for it, he'll learn to like me for four or five minutes. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's so. all it's going to take four or five. <laughs> that's, that's how. That's how that will go. You know. I like it. So that's there you go. Where did you? What a was I that like Kyle. That. Kyle? Yeah, I like that yeah. question. That's a great question. But coach, Kyle. who would be if you had a tag team match? So let's say let's you're going up against Caveman Rick. Who who would be your partner? <laughs> and then Rick Cooper. Yeah, yeah well, just right. I, guess, I guess we're in the cruiserweight division yeah. here. <laughs> um, hey, golly, that's that's really good. I mean. I don't know. It'd be hard. It'd be hard not to pick somebody like you know Stone Cold. He was my guy. So uh, yeah. I'll just Stone I'll Cold? just take Stone Cold Steve all Austin right. with me. Okay. Uh, for me, oh man, like back in the day. Um, all right, it's between two. I think. I think I would either do Rowdy Roddy or um, Jake the Snake. Oh, oh yeah, but he might, you're, you're definitely playing the heel yeah, here. But, I like yeah. that. But, like but Jake it. might not show up. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's that's. Uh, but but I, got, you know, I don't expect you to know that about Jake, yeah. but he might not show up. I got that's, this. Oh, the snake, though. He did show up. <laughs> I got this little story, though, was a guy used to play uh, roller hockey here in town. And I can't remember his name. That would save my life. But, like, he was from the, down the Sarasota area originally. Mm -hmm. Jake the Snake Roberts was, like, his best man at his wedding. Oh, Pretty okay, cool. so you probably could get Jake the Snake. Yeah. Just name drop the guy that you can't remember the yeah, name of. Exactly right. <laughs> that was some guy he sold John Doe. This guy that sold medical uh, products or something. Oh, no, well, that's why. Friends. That's why yeah. he was there. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, there you I go. I'm sure there was a lot of white powder at that. Yeah, that's <laughs> the medical. Yeah, we just see that white powder. showed up. BC and Goody Powder is what For, that was. Pharmaceutical, no less. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yeah. Um, I was watching one of those. Uh, this is awesome. WWE. Um, like countdown shows the yeah. other day and they were going over tag team partners so I was curious as to your guys' Mount Rushmore of tag teams oh yeah. wow 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 that's a question well, I, for Pharaoh, I mean, Monty and Coach Brian had off, off the top of my head I know who number one is it's after that it gets tough for me for real me. quick I just want to throw out somebody I thought was cool when I was younger Demolition they kind of look like they're Kiss they you so I like they're them. on the Mount Rushmore they're I, I mine, think they're, they're on I, I have to lead with the Road Warriors. Mm -hmm. I, I I mean the Road, road Warrior, Warrior Pop for yeah, crying out road loud. Warriors. They and look, what they became Legion of Doom later now. Give me the original Road Warrior run. Those guys I think have to lead it off. I, I'm good with demolition being on there. Um golly. Nasty boys? No. No. They were good though. Not get me for wrong. me. Uh golly. I may have to think about this one a little more. British Bulldogs. Mm. The British Bulldogs would they be up there. Too. Heart Foundation. They were good, too. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go, go ahead, Mike. Going. Go I'll, ahead. I'll go through real quick. Demolition. Mm -hmm. Fabulous Free Birds. And don't give yes. me this. There's three of them. They're a tag team. Yes. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say it. East-West Connection. Adonis and Ventura. That's yes. just a personal right. pick that's of mine. Right. 
and then Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas. That's a great list, Mike. I like that list. That's that's definitely different. Um, my list is is partially historically responsible, but also some of my favorites. Uh, I would say the Road Warriors have to be on anybody's Mount Rushmore. You're just you're just being ignorant if you don't include them. Um, hey, hey, hey! Take it easy there, buddy. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Man. <laughs> sorry, man. I you know I just got to tell it like Gordon Soli would tell me to tell it. Um, the Road Warriors. Demolition. This is one of my personal favorites. Come in, the Dudley Boys. Oh, yeah. I gotta have me some Dudley Boys. Uh, and you know what? In respect to the memory of Sika, I'll throw the Samoans, the original yeah. Samoans, Offer and Sika. Wow. On that, nice. on that. You know, there are a lot of other great tag teams that have done <laughs> major damage in this business. The Hardy Boys. There's plenty of great tag teams you could come up. I'll, with, I'll give kind of an old school reach here, but just for their absolute talent. And and I know they were over huge in the Midwest, but yeah. Ray Stevens and Nick Bockwinkel. Oh, probably yeah. oh. if if they had come along maybe eight or ten years later mm-hmm. with the advent sure. of television the way it was, sure. I think the things that they were able to do in right. the ring, especially right. Stevens was a high flyer early, right. I, I think they might have gotten more consistent. Mike, I'm surprised you didn't mention them, but they are kind of on, on face value the greatest tag team it, ever just on uh, reputation. Uh, and- I, it's, it's hard to disagree with Coach Jimmy. I mean, that's the problem with tag teams. It's not so clean as is with wrestlers. Yeah. You've got to put your favorites in there. Because, right. you know, yeah. if you're I, just going to go by titles and everything, you guys nailed yeah. it. But how don't you put Stevens and Bob yeah. Winkle? And on that note, what I was trying to get at was is I'm amazed you didn't say Hogan and Savage. Because you yelled at me the last That's time. right. <laughs> that's right. What was that? With Mega Powers? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 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 Okay, that's man. right. Yeah. <laughs> Dig it. Yep. Mm, golly. Yep. No, that, you're right, though. It is really tough with the tag teams because, like, I mean, you know, I was younger. I enjoyed the Rockers. I thought they were great. Yeah, but right. I thought the Rock and Roll Express. And how did we leave out the Midnight Express? Right. Those guys were phenomenal. Uh, I could see them being Now, on granted, anybody. there was, again, two iterations of them. You know, we didn't get right. Condry for as long as we'd mm-hmm. like. But Stan Lane, yeah. the fact that Stan Lane stepped in and that tag team was just as good is yes, amazing. It, it is amazing. So those guys were were. It is amazing. Phenomenal. Yep. They could be easily be on anybody's yeah. Mount Rushmore. Coach Brian, Pharaoh, Monty, appreciate you guys stepping in. I'm going to go ahead and step out. Caveman Rick's going to ask you guys one more yeah, question. And uh, I'm going to go play a little bit of softball. Hey, good to see y'all. And uh, see you Monday. Hey, Hi, man. Hey, wait a minute. Take me with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love softball. There you go. There All go. right. Yeah, last question we got on here. Uh, how about this, guys? What do you guys think was the best era of wrestling? Hmm. It's going to be hard for me not to say the Attitude Era just because of my, I'm, I'm a few years younger probably than Jimmy and Mike, uh, although not as many as I'd like to be. Mm. But uh, for me, I, think. I, I like the Golden Age, but the Attitude Era for me, like I could not miss Monday nights. So I'm going to go with that. So what's, like, what's the years of That's that? That's like 90s? 96 to okay. about 2002. All right. Monty Farrell, what about you guys? What about you, Mike? You go first. You go with the golden era. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, Jimmy, we actually spoke about this last Thursday. I know we're pressed for time. Uh, it's very close between the era we're sitting in now mm-hmm. and the golden era. But, you know, growing up, I have to go with the golden era. Yeah, I agree with Mike. There was nothing like the, the birth of wrestling becoming the household thing. Yeah, WrestleMania right. becoming the Super Bowl of wrestling. Hulk Hogan becoming the face of pro wrestling. Uh, the first wrestler to be put on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Yeah. You know, the, the things that happened during the original explosion of from, I would say, approximately 84 to I'm almost basically up until when Warrior uh, yeah. beats Hogan. Right on. I think I'd agree. That's my time. But I appreciate you guys coming in today. Uh, Caveman Rick uh, filling in for David Hayes here at the end of the show, guys. Tune in uh, Monday as always. Monday morning, James Hale Show, 7 o'clock. Inside Drive at 11. And uh, afternoon underdogs back at 4 o'clock. Catch you guys next week. Have a great weekend. See you, Mike. Later. America's team plays here. Swing and a miss. Took him out. That's number 10. The Atlanta Braves on ESPN Northwest Florida. Charlie Morton, Max Fried, and Chris Sale lead the Braves' dominant pitching rotation. That's 18 up, 18 down.